Uh, we have a couple of things going on today. Um, a little bit later, I'll do a throwing demonstration. And uh, this evening, Landon and I are going to go to a gathering of the Yellowstone Professional Potters Guild. It meets once a month, so that'll be fun. Uh, but for now, I wanted to show you one of our most recent purchases. Let's see here. I picked up a, a third kiln over the weekend, a little um, night kiln. It's a, a manual, it's got a little kiln sitter there. And I guess I just wanted to talk a minute about, um, you know, when you set up your studio. So if you're starting up a new studio um, or really starting any new business, you've got this list of different things that you need in order to start the business. Like for a pottery studio, obviously a kiln is necessary, but a wheel isn't. And also, you know, a kiln, um, my first kiln I got from in uh, Roundup, Montana. I found it on Craigslist for $250. Um, yeah, I functioned with that kiln, which is actually this size of a kiln. Um, I functioned with that kiln for six months before I bought my large oval kiln. And, you know, it was a struggle to fill orders with the small kiln, but that, you know, at the time, that's what I could afford. Um, and it, it, I really didn't want to take on any debt, you know, to purchase a larger kiln, especially um, you know, my first priority was to make work and to get contracts, you know, to find places to sell my work. So the the marketing, um, figuring out how to reach my clients and the people who'd be interested in my work, those were more th those were more important aspects of the business at that time than getting brand new equipment. You know, I just needed some way to fulfill my orders. And this kiln, um, you know, I'm really busy enough now that, let's take this off the tripod. Um, I'm, I'm busy enough now that I just needed a second kiln kind of as a backup. This is a really handy size of kiln to have because I can fit probably like on the first level there, you know, on the bottom level, I can fit, you know, 24 mugs on the second level. Um, you know, I could fit 24 to 28 mugs because you won't, you won't have kiln posts. And um, these smaller kilns fire quickly. Um, a glaze firing only takes, you know, somewhere between three and a half to four and a half hours. And because they are manual, they've just got the little kiln sitters in them, uh, which means, you know, you use a cone. Um, on the inside uh, instead of an electric controller uh, to shut to have the kiln shut off at the proper temperature. Uh, a kiln of this size used functions very similar to a brand new kiln you know with the same um, sophistication basically like it's not a complicated piece of machinery and while this does need some repair um, I need the rods that go in here that hold the kiln the cone up and there are some issues with the bricks you know but that doesn't prevent me from firing the kiln those issues don't I know how to fix those things and this kiln was $250 just like my other one they were asking $350 but with the shape that it's in you know the few repairs that I need to make um, and the fact that I'd gotten one previously for $250 I just felt like that's what it was worth so yeah, and a, a kiln brand new, this size, um, would be somewhere, depending on the brand, brand new would be somewhere between 850 at the absolute minimum. I mean, I, I'm not even sure you can get one for 850 anymore. I've seen them up as high as 1500 to $1,700. So, and then the same goes, um, you know, I, I put this down. I do slab work as well on my, I think it was a 1994 article in Ceramics Monthly where a guy um, came up with plans to build his own slab roller. 
So then, um, you know, I, I got the plans and then I looked at the building of it online. There was a YouTube video. Um, yeah, but this is a handmade slab roller. It works great. I mean, you can't dial in an exact size on this slab roller. Like I can't dial it into um, a quarter inch or a half inch and, ro and roll out a perfect slab. But you get to know your own equipment pretty well. I've got these different layers in here that I can take out or add depending on the, on the thickness that I want. Um, just put the clay in between the canvas just like you would a slab roller that you would uh, buy from a ceramics supply house. But this one cost us less than $220 in materials. Of course, like you need, luckily my husband has the skill to build, you know, something like this. But um, I'll go ahead and uh, at the end of the video, I'll put a link or you know, where to the plans for this. So if you want to build your own slab roller, um, I'll give you the plans for that. So yeah, I guess the point being is that, um, you know, when you're starting a business, there's the the ideal list of things that you want to start your business but you don't always have to have new of everything you don't always have to have the biggest the best you like figure out what is the minimum that I need in order to begin working you know be start to be able to start living that dream that I want to live all right Sponge. I have a sponge in here. Yes. Move this back just a little. Okay. All right. So um, my standard mug is made is thrown from a pound and a half of clay. I use clay from Archie Bray Foundation. It's made in Montana clay out of Helena, Montana. So first we're just going to center and press down. This clay is a little hard so it might take me a second to center it. one I'll do with a softer ball of clay. So you pull the clay up using the force from the palm of your hands and then with plenty of water push it back down and you do that as many times as you need to um, to get the clay centered. get a nice even top to it then I open up my clay I um, anchor my elbow into my leg I put my hand I rest it on the edge of the clay and then I use that to stabilize my hand as I make an opening and once you get positioned you just push down as you know as hard as you need to, to get through the clay I was pushing pretty hard because this clay is pretty firm so I pushed about this far down you know um, after you do this enough times you just get a sense for how far down you need to go but you can always do a little test you know on the outside so put your fingers on the outside of the clay figure out how far in you know you need to push to get the uh, thickness of base that you want once you open up the clay, or make an entry, then you're gonna open it up a little bit. And I like to open and at the same time pull. So my first pull is uh, of the clay is actually when I'm opening the pot as well. So here we go. And then inside I can press bottom of the pot and that's bit just by rubbing my fingers back and forth between the center and the edge of the inside. So once I get it 
it um, opened, I usually slow down the wheel a little bit. So when you pull, um, you want the your outside hand to be at the bottom. Your inside hand, now imagine that there is a wall of clay in between my two fingers. So the outside, inside is a little bit higher and you basically just compress those two together and you pull up. You want your pull to be straight up and down. That's why anchoring that elbow is so important. Um, you don't, you, it's easy if you're not anchored to like pull this way instead of up. And you're gonna lo make it a lopsided pot if you do that. So, when I'm creating, um, technique. So I open, I pull twice, then I trim. And then I pull one more time. dry my hands off, you know, before I lift it up. There it is. Okay, and um, so it, I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference or not, but this is a much softer clay. So here uh, is me throwing the same mug, but with a much softer clay. I feel, just feel like it goes a little faster.
key to consistency is coming up with a process that you know works for you. Um, you find a, a product that you want to make, you come up with your technique for throwing it. You practice it over and over again. And my suggestion is, um, you know, if you're feeling like you are not getting consistent looking pieces, is to um, get roll out a hundred balls of clay and then put them in, get a big bucket of water, um, a slurry bucket, and then just throw those 100 balls of clay over, do, do all of them. Throw all 100 balls before you get up from the wheel. You can come in. Okay, I didn't know if you were like, oh, It's Jamie. No, I don't know. <laughs> is calling. Oh, so he I is. Know. Thank you. I didn't want to go, like, I thought he was like, I'm just sleeping. Landon. Where are we going? To a party. A party? What kind of party? Uh, can we have a cake? There might be cake there. Is it a party with potters? No. <laughs> Is it a potter party? No. <laughs> it doesn't have pots yet. No pots yet. No, they didn't build pots yet. I don't know. I think we're going to go to a party with some potters. No, potters are not there. Hmm, I think they are there. All right, let's go. Maybe, but we'll see if they're there. Okay. But they are there. No potters. They're not there yet. Should we go? Yeah. All right, let's go. We have to say hi to them first. Yeah, we do. Chocolate fudge and red balloons Argyle socks and the blue suede shoes A stroll in Central Park with you Bare feet on sands in Malibu and Drinks at two in the afternoon I'm in just that kind of a mood Holding hands Love's pantomime Shooting glances Time to time Champagne bubbles Cupid's brew To usher in The rising moon Oh, my heart whistles A happy tune I'm in just that Kind of a mood 